We're not quite ready. Oh, we got to get you fired up. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone, to City Council meeting for August 13th. If we can have a roll call, please, to establish quorum. Terry McClung. I'm here. Melissa Green. I'm here. Bob Thomas. Here. Christy Kendrick. Here. Vicki Schneider. Here. We have five. All right. If we can stand. Pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a motion to uh, so move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to, if it's okay with the city council, move uh, for under new business the acceptance of the 2016 audit to the first order of business. While well, Lonnie's still here, move three. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Do we have any other changes, additions? Hearing none. Get a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, get approval of the minutes. So so moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Have one opposed? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Four one. Um <laughs> We have any? I don't think we have anybody on any of the. Have anything? Anybody with plan? Or, I don't think we have anybody with the planning yet, do we? Nope. Uh, we got several vacancies with the planning. Have one with the CAPC and the hospital and cemetery. We have two positions. So anyone out in TV land uh, that's interested in being on one of these commissions, please come in and fill out an application. So that brings us to public comments. Uh, if you would please limit your time to three minutes. Bob Jasinski, 46 Hillside. Uh, at the last meeting, Ken Cornell offered to fill in for uh, David Mitchell. I strongly recommend that you uh, take up his offer because I remember when he sat on council, he was one of the few voices that constantly brought up the fact that the city was spending its reserves unwisely and I, I give him a lot of credit for that. No one listened to him then and now it's finally caught up to the city and of course the mayor's done a great job of trying to eliminate the, uh, the deficits and the problems along with it. Okay, getting back to uh, the ordinance that's going to be on uh, for discussion tonight, the 2269. I uh, have written out my comments and, I, and what I did is I copied the city ordinance as it exists now and the state statute right after it which uh, and then of course the proposed changes to 2269 which has to do with whether or not they have to have uh, public notice and a hearing when planning proposes ordinances. And you notice that, as I said last time, that the existing ordinance copied the state statute verbatim and it uses the word all. All ordinances must have a public hearing when they're proposed by planning. There's no exceptions. Now, the planning rewrote it for a reason I don't understand. I guarantee you they were totally unaware why the drafters of the city ordinance uh, uh, copied the state statute. That eliminates a lot of problems. And the good thing about it, when you copy the state statutes, if there's any judicial interpretation of the state statute, you can use it to interpret the local ordinance. But they went on here to put words, and what bothers me is the words of limitation that they added to it. In other words, all plans, recommended ordinance, and regulations pertaining to, those are words of limitation. And if you look at Exhibit C, what I, do is, uh, what I did is I copied uh, an excerpt from a law review article on statutory interpretation, whereas when you have a list of things that's included in an ordinance or in a statute that limits what is required. And the problem is you have a state statute. You could, I say, either don't adopt a new ordinance or just plain revoke the ordinance as it exists because the state law trumps it anyway. So what difference does it make? The other thing is there was certain, uh, there was a few comments made that nobody showed up for the public hearing that planning held. Well, if you look at Exhibit A, you'll see the notice of the public hearing there. And all it says is a public hearing on proposed ordinances to the Eureka Springs Municipal Code will be held at et cetera, et cetera. 
whether it had there and it's totally deficient the, uh, the statute by the way as you know both the state statute and the one requires that you give a public notice it's totally deficient because it fails to summarize or describe in any way what the proposed revisions are in other words the notice is deficient because it fails to state whether the proposed ordinance pertains to zoning land use etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. it would not stand a court challenge and this is required by the due process clause of the u.s and the arkansas constitution you have to give adequate notice and a meaningful opportunity to be heard and if you don't tell the people what the ordinance says how can you possibly come in and comment on it thank you very much better call Saul is on tonight at eight o'clock don't miss it <laughs> i'm going to keep that okay okay i need to you want to take it yeah, just make a copy just for me <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Everybody can hear me. Am I ready? Mm -hmm. Last time I was here, I described a council street situation with the derelict, unoccupied house and the dogs in distress in a cage on the front porch. There was no legal recourse except a barking ordinance and a space ordinance about 10 square feet per dog, which was apparently not enforced that first week before access to the house was created. In any case, not much could be done, so I protested in the street. This week, I'd like to support Melissa Green and her attempt to reshape our animal ordinance to help encourage people to create safe canine citizens, because isn't that the point? Humane care of dogs and other animals ensures public safety. A traumatized, fearful dog is more inclined to be unpredictable and to lash out. I have volunteered at the shelter and have worked with dogs that humans utterly failed. It takes patience, time, and fearless love to win back a broken, untrusting dog. It's better to encourage people not to mistreat animals in the first place. If our only recourse to cruel or neglectful situations is to invoke noise ordinances or puny space ordinances, we aren't addressing the underlying problems. Also, when we lack proper humane guidelines and simply impose barking ordinances, then we have less than savory dog owners applying black plastic around their cages in the summer, for instance, and saying, well, the cops told me to so the dogs, dogs wouldn't bark or perhaps uh, hypothetically applying shock collars or other means to stop dogs from expressing their plight. The proposal to disallow kenneling in residential neighborhoods is a good start toward humane animal care guidelines. If you can't live with your dogs, you shouldn't have them. If you can hear, smell, see, and experience an animal in distress, it's harder to neglect that animal. If you live apart from your animals and just leave it up to your neighbors to witness your neglect, well, that's bad for dogs and neighbors. Let's just do away with that scenario in the future altogether. Obviously, this should not apply to citizens on vacation having friends come by to take care of their pets. Thank you. I'm sorry, would you state your name and address, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I was in a hurry to get my three minutes. Uh, <laughs> Laurel Owen, uh, 30 Council Street. Thank you. Mm. That's it? All right. Um, okay, that concludes our public comments. Um, would like to see if we can get a motion to... Uh, Accept the 2016 audit from the Legislative Audit Committee. All moved. Second. All right. Has anybody had a chance to review it and look at it? Any questions? If not, can I get a motion to approve the Legislative Audit for 2016? All moved. Okay. I make Sorry. a proper motion to accept the audit for 2016. All right. Mickey accepts the audit. Get a second. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. Any, any discussion? All in favor, signify mm -hmm. by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. All right. Uh, takes care of that. Uh, our next item is the discussion of the process for electing the new council person. Motion to discuss. So moved. Okay. Ms. Green? Make it proper. Yeah. Oh, oh. I make a motion to discuss the process for electing a new council person. Second. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, it looks like that's something we're supposed to do at this meeting and 
and uh, and not let this go. So I would like to uh, 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 recommend and I don't know if that's the right word to uh, nominate nominate uh, Tom Buford for that for that open position. We need a point of order, please. What's that? We do not elect a new council member to fill in. We appoint, and that is a major legal difference. We uh, we do vote. We, we, we actually are appointing. We are we, we actually elected. voting, and we have two people who have actually, uh, as far as I know, put in their applications. Is that correct, but Madam Clerk? Even though we do actually vote, we do not elect. We appoint. We appoint. We, we we elect by ballot. I'm, I mean, you may be. No, we don't have to do a ballot. Remember, we. No, we have to do a ballot or a show of hands. Yes. One or the other. Yes. So I'm going to ask the council how they would like to handle this. Would you like to do it by show of hands? I have a question. For okay. You. Um, are those two people that you just mentioned the only people who have applied? As far as I know, is that right, Ms. Madam Clerk? In writing to anyone at City Hall, yes. Is anybody else aware of anybody? I am not. And the process is typically that a person sends in writing her or his interest in being on a ballot, and that's how it happened again this time. Thank you. And actually, the ordinance states the person elected by the the remaining members of the council is not subject to veto. Right because we actually are appointed. It is the person elected. So, do we want to do a show of hands, or would you like to do a ballot? And you have to sign your name if you do a ballot. Yeah. Show of hands. You know how I feel about I, signing I'm a ballot. Say, I'm saying these. This is why we've got to do it. It's up to the council. How you want to do it? Would this you like to vote on that? I'd like to have a motion or a vote on one way or the other. Now, does that need to be a secret ballot too, or? <laughs> no. right. I, I, I just, let's just move it on the road. I mean, that's the point. If we're going to sign, all right, let's go ahead and pass, pass the ballots it? out, please. please why are we name. using a ballot if we're going to sign our name and we can raise just, our hand and there no. is no comprehend? Comp all right, I made a motion. I made it. I made a note. We're going to vote on these two people. Here's a ballot. We will pass it out. And sign your name, please. And we'll count on those two. Can, can you tell us who the two nominees are? Even You're about to find out. Oh. You have the two. So they don't need to be nominated? No. Me, Mr. no they don't just need to be, be nominated just be here. voted. That's, that's okay. Well, then I'll read. Well, I'm not going to withdraw my nomination. I'll leave it up. Yeah. Just and please sign your name on it, or initial. And return them back this direction. Oops. Is that two? No. I'm waiting for the rest to come in. I refuse to sign a private secret ballot. I have. So you're not going to vote? Before, and I will always refuse because it's totally uncalled for. When we can raise our hand, they know exactly who voted how. Well, I'm sorry, I will not sign a ballot. Period. All right, this Madam clear Clerk, would you? Two years ago. One vote for Tom Buford. Okay. And here. Is that Tom's? Um, it's the it's the tally sheet. Uh, let's see, one vote for Tom Buford. One vote for Tom Buford. That's enough right there. Mm -hmm. One vote for Tom Buford. All right. Uh, Mr. Buford, looks like you have been selected to be the new council member for the remaining term. You're so lucky. If we would like to take a motion to adjourn for five minutes, and I will swear you in. Okay. You like I move for a recess. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Any opposed? Abstain. All right. So moved. Since I didn't.
Number two. All right, are we ready? Okay, back in session again. Get a motion to discuss the kindling dogs. Motion to discuss kindling of dogs. Second. All right. Okay. Ms. Green? Um, first of all, I have a couple questions for Tim. Okay, in residential one, it says that the uses there are dwelling, single or double, or public use. And anything else needs a CUP? What's that have to do with dogs? Pardon me. Well, no, it, just let me finish. It, okay. In, in residential, Terry, you, the uses are dwellings, single or double dwellings, or like public use, such as a park. Anything else you have to get uh, CUP for. And that's what it says. I mean, I'm just asking him if that's correct. If you're going where I think you're going, you're overextending okay. the limitation. Okay. But that's what it says. Okay. So if, if you were to take animals up to an uninhabited house and put them there, would that be another use? Would, would you need a CUP? Depends on what you were planning on doing with the home. Okay. Well, if you weren't going to live there. If you were never going to live there and you were only going to occupy it with the animals, potentially, then you may be running a business. But if you're not selling the animals or otherwise driving an income from them, you're not running a business. Okay. Okay. Well, the, the reason I ask is, is this is, could have been just an aberration, a one-time thing, but there's another one going on right now on North Maine where three dogs are in a shed that doesn't meet the enclosure requirements. And I've talked with Jimmy. He is giving the woman some time to, you know, come into compliance. But this neighborhood was abused, as was were those animals. I, I was up there. I mean, the stench was unbelievable. And from 70 feet, 75 feet away, and the barking. You know, nobody should have to go through that. Do you have the language? It's in your packet. Oh. Okay. Ms. Kendricks? I, I'm just wondering why um, this situation couldn't have been dealt with under nuisance, mm -hmm. um, which provides um, that, um, that the city has um, the power to eliminate nuisances that may be, become a breeding place for flies, mosquitoes, rats, pests, germs, or vermin. I mean, it sounded as if he was not cleaning up after himself, and that it will end nuisances described as that which causes offense, annoyance, or injury, and it goes on to distinguish between public and private nuisances. It may have been. Uh, there wasn't anybody issuing a citation on that point. I, I, well, as I appreciate, there were complaints. At how was it was determined that it wasn't a nuisance, or I mean, how was it dealt with? Perhaps well, maybe we the animal control animal. officer was dealing with it, and he couldn't. He didn't feel there was a, enough to issue any complaints. Okay. Did um, the um, building inspector go look? Well, I'm not sure, uh, but I think what we're dealing with, that's a separate issue than what this well, item is. Right okay, now. well, maybe I don't understand then what the situation was. Was it a problem of it causing a nuisance to the neighborhood, or was it a problem of the health and welfare of the dogs? I'm not sure at this point what we're talking about is discussion of kenneling the dogs, and that I think has been resolved. But Miss um, Green, you want to just Jimmy was unaware of the enclosure ordinance, which is number two one five zero section twelve dash twenty seven dash twelve. When he became aware of it, the situation had already been eradicated. But there is another one now. And for me, it's, it's the neglect and abuse of these animals, and that's, that's my opinion. 
um, in the case of Council Street, it, it just the laws that were broken that should have the the public nuisance, the safety hazards, the disturbing of the peace, the enclosure. I I think we have laws, and Anne here has brought up in the domestic foul code on page 137, four section D, referencing obnoxious smells that waste and subject could be added to the dog section under the enclosure and, and I think we need to do that and also I think we need to enforce the enclosure one because these dogs down on North Main are let out once a day they're in less than a hundred feet for three of them they're supposed to have a hundred feet for each each animal they're in a floodplain if we have a horrible flood they will drown you know that that's not right and, and the Humane Society has offered to take these animals. Mitch Snyder. May, may, yep. may I ask a quick question? And, right. and that is, what is the number on that? Uh, Which one? The enclosure. The enclosure. It is um, ordinance number 2150, section 12-27-12. It's on page 127 of our code book. Thank you. Ms. Snyder? Okay, since this came up, I took, I did the proper procedures. I want everybody to know that I did this the way you're supposed to do it. Talk to the experts, meaning police, building, and animal control. Have had meetings with all of them. They have gone through all of this. The uh, house that's being referenced right now on council has been looked at and inspected by police, by animal, by building. The 100 foot rule is more than covered for those dogs because they had the full run of the house, not just the porch. Contrary to some belief, um, some people thought there was no electricity to the house. There was and the AC and fans were on. The dogs were accessible to that. The, this house was gone into. So you, they could say, yes, there was electricity running. They had plenty of food. They had plenty of water. According to the officials, now I personally had not been there. According to the officials on all levels, there was not an odor problem. I wasn't there. I'm not taking sides on that. That's what they have all said and separately. These were separate individual meetings that I had with these people. Um, the 100 foot rule, according to our animal control expert, should be for dogs that are 40 pounds or more. This should not be 100 feet for little teeny chihuahuas or anything like that. Um, in reference to the three that are in the whatever that's called anymore the structure that is what did they say so being 10 by 10 making 100 feet it's like 168 feet or something but it's three little dogs more than enough room for all three. They have AC, they have food, they have water. They get walked at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. They appear to be very happy that two has been checked and inspected. Those are the two sets of animals there. What has been suggested in regards to dogs is we change our ruling that merely says 100 foot and I believe it says four dogs, it should be per dog, of 40 pounds or more. So we should change that to 40 pounds or more is 100 foot. As far as the other things, these are the results that we came up with, and we've been working on this for several weeks now. So for each 40 pound or more dog would be the 100 foot. Smaller ones, there is not a problem. Um, the three dogs are technically legal, the little ones, because it's over 100 feet. And the way it reads, it doesn't specify per. It says four, F-O-R. It says four, 100 feet, four dogs. It doesn't say per dog. Um, anyway, so that's that one part. Now, 
the very, very end of the whole animal thing, at 6.12.04, it mentions an alternative with the state health department. No one can figure out why that's in because state health department deals strictly with people. They laugh their butts off when we say, do you have anything to say or do about animals? Um, so that shouldn't even be in there. It has nothing to do with it. That should just plain be removed. The other topic that came up at the same time as these two different sets of dogs was pot-bellied pigs. Some people have a couple of pot-bellied pigs that are rather sizable at this point and some of their neighbors are having fits because these are pigs. There is a definite breed difference between pot-bellied pigs and a hog and our thing reads other animals, no hogs, horses, mules, cattle, goats, or sheep in city limits. That's chapter 6.08 of other animals under the dog stuff. The suggestion for that is that, and like I said, all of the groups agree with this, police, animal, the whole nine yards. Anybody who wants to have a pot-bellied pig for a pet merely has to get a veterinarian certificate that the breed is pot-bellied. It is not a hog. It is a pot-bellied pig. I've only seen one like this big. I didn't know they could get big, but they can't. So I wouldn't know what if I fell over it. The other thing that was said was first you get the veteran certificate that this is a pot-bellied breed which are on their own, they are domesticated like a dog is from a wolf. Okay, it's the same way. So between a pot bellied and a hog, that's the difference. It's like a dog from a wolf. The animal control says they should agree that 80% of the time the pot bellied pigs would be indoors. Their pooping should be properly removed, meaning taken to a trash can, you know, put in their garbage thing, whatever. Um, the exterior property should be accessible as deemed necessary by animal control. That way, nobody can let their pigs out to poop around and leave it out there and destroy the neighborhood. So that covers the three issues that are up right now. The biggest thing that I was told by both entities was, and everybody knows I prefer dogs and cats over people, just because it's not the way you would do it doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't mean you should write five million laws so people have to do it your way. These dogs that were on Council Street are still very viable. I know exactly where they are. They are in great healthy condition. The owner loves his dogs. He was with them all the time, in and out, from work and everything else. Maybe not sleeping with them like I sleep with mine. Not with them 24-7, but it was just like anybody else who had the job to go to. These dogs were in perfect health. They were inspected by animal control. They have been removed to another place and they are very happy with people his people, his family. The uh, three little ones are very much cared for and they are in a big enough container, whatever you want to call their little space. So that covers that. He says there is no way we can make any laws that are going to cover personal, private property and dog poop. I dare anyone to come to my acre in the center of town and tell me what I have to do with my dog's poop in their huge fenced in yard. That ain't gonna happen. And that's exactly what police and animal control has said. So, Mr. Green? Well, number one, the first 10 days, it did not meet the enclosure law. And in, under the description of enclosure, it says per dog. There's no 44. It might be a different no, right, book. Right, and and I just, I just, I, I, I had numerous phone calls, numerous emails. It was on Facebook. Are we calling all the people that live there liars that 
the guy came up maybe once a day. People took water over, they took food over. I believe these people. Jimmy came once a day maybe and checked it. And, and I have the highest respect for Jimmy. I've had a number of conversations with him and he kind of told me a different story than he told you, Mickey, but that's fine. No, nobody told me that. No, wait, story. one at a time, please. Different story, different, he had different ideas for me. Um, you know, it's, I just think maybe adding a couple of things like what Ann brought is, is adding the, the, the waste and stuff in the fall thing, add that to the dog. Um, Mickey is correct. We, we really can't tell someone how to take care of their animals. Any other comments? Do you have a motion you want to make? I would like to make a motion that we clean up the animal codes in the way that was suggested by police and animal control. Would you write up your comments, please, and, and submit them to the council yes. for us to review? Yes. Would you like those at the next meeting? Yeah. The changes? Will do. Okay. Any other comments? Was there a yes, second? Ms. I'd just like to point out that we already have um, an ordinance that... Uh, no, actually, we didn't get a second either. I'm sorry. That's oh, d does she need a second? Yes. Who, who needs a second? Mickey? Mickey did. Oh, right yep. up the changes? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second it for you to do okay. that. But. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to point out that we um, 6.04.16 is pretty broad, and it's called cruelty to animals. It says, no person shall cruelly treat any animal in the city in any way. Any person who inhumanely beats, underfeeds, overloads, or abandons any animal shall be deemed guilty of a violation of this chapter. So there are other provisions that we already have in the, in the co code, city code. All right, well, I think what the motion is with Mickey is to write up some changes for the uh, ordinance to be considered. Which number, Mickey? Was that to you wanting to... Uh, uh, the Title Six Animals and Fowl and Under Dogs okay. Definitions. Is that the same one that you were talking about? Yeah, it's, it's in there too. We had okay. he and I had talked about that part too. All right. So that's a motion. Uh, we got a second. Any further discussion? Do it. A vote. Okay. If not, all those in wait, favor. Wait, wait, wait. What? One quick second. Um, I also wanted to point out the question about dog feces that was mentioned. Um, that was put on there in, in you know, getting rid of it, whatever. That was in regards to the, the parks. I was on council. I think both Terry and Butch were separate. That, yeah, and that's the point. That whole thing was in regards to people walking their dogs like in Basin Park that's and separate, not picking separate, it up. Separate issue. Right, but that's what they were referring to in regards to the personal dogs, and that was a parks issue that didn't pass. All right. All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Three. Aye. Yes, I am. Aye. Well, what the motion? <laughs> for me to put it out. She's going to she's going to write up some stuff for us to consider changing the ordinance. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All those opposed. I am. Mr. Thomas, did you vote? Oh yes, I voted aye. Okay. So five one. All right. Um, our next item comes up with uh, Larry Burkett's uh, damage claim. Is Larry here? I do not no. see Mr. Burkett here. Oh boy. Uh, <clears throat> Can I ask what this is in regards to? Yeah, I don't I have in our motion yeah, to get a motion to motion discuss. Motion to discuss. Yeah. That doesn't tell me anything. Get a second. This? Yes. Oh. Did we get a second? No. I'm sorry, second. Motion to, okay. Um, I thought I had a, should have had a little note, I thought, from Larry. Um, he basically drove, was driving down Mountain Street, and his claim was that he, uh, there was a limb hanging over Mountain Street, and it uh, damaged or knocked off his, uh, front door side mirror um, he went to say something to 
uh, Public Works. And by the time Public Works had gotten up there, they had already trimmed all the limbs. Uh, and I said, I don't know if what happened. This is just something he said. So I said, you're going to have to bring it up before the council. If the council wants to approve it, they can approve it. If not, then we won't. We won't. One question. Yes, sir. Before Public Works got there, they had already trimmed all the limbs. Who is the they? Public Works. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Did Public Works say that they had already trimmed it, or he is assuming Public Works did it? I think Public Works said they had trimmed. There were some limbs hanging over the street. But we don't know if it was the limb. We don't know if it was the limbs. We don't know anything outside of what Mr. Burkett said. Mr. McClellan? Do we know if it was a city-owned tree? No. So it's two down and three down. Okay. Ms. Snyder? Um, was he aware that he was supposed to be here today? He was, was he notified? I don't know. He knew, and he knew it was going to be on the city council agenda because I told him he had to uh, come before the council and present well, it to the council. I make a motion we put this off until he shows up to discuss it with us. Okay. Do I get a second to defer it? I'll second it. All right. A motion to defer it. To all those in favor, saying five, saying aye. Aye. All those against. What's our options? We discuss Not to pay it. Wait, wait, just vote. Yeah. Vote. I mean, I don't know. All those opposed? Sing five. I, I'm opposed. I'm opposed. Oh, no. no. Okay. Can I change so we had Mr. McCall, what's your vote? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm usually uh, Very wishy washy on it. I suppose, I mean, the guy ought to be allowed to speak his case. I mean, I'm not so sure that we're responsible for anything, but we should at least, you know, he's a citizen that should at least hear him. So I say yes. So we have only two eyes, Ms. Schneider and Mr. McClung. Is that correct? 4-2? 2-4. Four, 2-4. Two. Two, four. Two, four. All right. That's to defer <coughs> it. All right. Second item would be whether or not we pay it. Ms. Green. Do, it, doesn't this come under tort immunity? It does. Okay. And we usually never pay any of these? If it's a, you know if it's an obvious we've had chance, we've had in the past where we've been weed eating mm -hmm. um, and we busted somebody's windshield or yeah. window uh, we went ahead and paid because it was obviously something the public works had done. Well, th th and then I guess I would like to retract my no vote and probably defer it because I, I guess I want no I can't do that. All right, <laughs> I think I think he can. <laughs> <laughs> in a perfect world, I could. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can vote to reconsider. Uh, how do I, okay. Um, I'll make a motion to reconsider deferring this till the next meeting. A second. <laughs> Ms. Reaver, is that, are we doing this right? It's supposed to be at the next meeting that That's we That's what I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're wrong. So do I retract that? We ignore it. Uh, okay. <laughs> For now. <laughs> so I guess, I mean... Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I think it can be done at this meeting. I think Robert's rule says it can be done either at this meeting or at the... But no later than the next meeting. I'm willing, if the council is willing to, to consider this, to, for us to yeah. listen bring my book. to... Uh, reconsider this okay uh we'll have a vote on it anyway so we'll see where we go from there um uh, let's, let's have a, i don't know if that's a motion i guess in a second uh to be reconsidered i heard your motion i did not hear a second i seconded thank you all right let's have a roll call is there any discussion? Yes. You I'd just like to say I will, I will always respect a request for cons reconsideration if a person changes their mind and, or feels that they have other information. Which any further discussion? Yes, I, I'd just like, the reason I, I changed is when you said that on occasion we have paid. I, I just thought that we as normally didn't, so 
I, I'd like to have the guy be able to come and at least discuss if it was our fault. Okay. Okay. So a vote on Rich, reconsidering? Ms. Grant, uh, Ms. Snyder. I was just going to say, should we specify he's got to be at the next meeting or forget it? A point of order. No, it's just we're just consider reconsidering okay. the vote right oh, okay. now. Okay. Okay. Mr. Right. Thomas. Sorry. Mr. Thomas. You vote on reconsidering? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? No. Mr. McClung? Uh, yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Wait, pull one. No, you got one more. You got one more. Oh, oh Mr. Buford. fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> My apology. Mr. Buford. Mr. Buford. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think I'll just go through and fill in all the blanks right now. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go ahead and reconsider this. Yes. Uh, the motion would be to defer this until he he's here at the next meeting and notify him and and have him appear at the next meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Would you like me to sip, clarify in regards to or else? <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. The moment was to defer this. I know, and we and then we reconsidered. We voted not to not to. She voted no and wanted to change it. And was the no the the um, swing vote? Huh? I, I'm confused. Did, did we have a vote? It became three three at that point, and it's true. The mayor has the option of voting or not for deferral. Yeah, uh, and I voted to defer it. So. I'm, I'm totally confused myself now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can start um, over on this. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not. No, I, no, let's. I mean, I think if well, she made a motion to reconsider. Think, right. Mickey seconded. You took a vote just now on the motion to reconsider. Now you can reconsider the issue, yeah. which is to defer it or not. Yeah. Which is to defer it or not. Okay. 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 So my deferral is: I make a motion to defer until the next meeting when he can be here to talk to us or we will decide without him. All right, now then we'll all have a vote. <laughs> and the second is? Second. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. McClung, second. Got it. All right. May Go. I have um, a, a yes, discussion? Yes, ma'am. Um, if he is going to appear, uh, can we ask someone from Public Works to appear sure. as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But that was not part of the motion. No, no, no that's no, just no. a yeah. discussion. <coughs> Question. All right, roll call. <laughs> Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? No. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. 5-1. Okay. All right, that brings us up to our next item, which is a resolution to donate to protective gear. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Let's find that. Uh, we have, uh, the fire department has some, um, personnel protective gear that they uh, no longer need and they would like to be able to uh, donate this to uh, Oak Grove Volunteer Fire Department. Um, so it's outdated and actually the, the gear is not even available to be used at uh, the fire academy in, uh, down south. Handed. Camden. Is it, is it safe for Oak Grove? Uh, the fire chief seemed to think it was. Good enough for them. <laughs> better, better than their Levi's. Better than right. their cotton gloves. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what this is all about. I'd like to make a motion we donate to Oak Grove the surplus. Resolution. How about, how about uh, oh, you got a resolution already? We got a resolution. Okay. Okay. All right, that's in your pack. Motion we we read and approve read the resolution. Approval. Sign the number and read for approval. Yes, please. Second. Okay. I knew what you meant. Good, because I sure don't most <laughs> of the time.
Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Uh, Mr. Buford? Uh, yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Six zero. The resolution number will be 733. A resolution to authorize the mayor to dispose of city-owned property without receiving monetary compensation. Where's the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed, City Eureka Springs City Fire Department has outdated and surplus personal protective equipment listing attached to need to get, which is no longer needed for fire department operations. And whereas the city would like to dispose of this property by donating it to the town of Oak Grove Volunteer Fire Department. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that the mayor is hereby authorized to assist the City Fire Department in disposing of the outdated and surplus personnel protective equipment by transferring ownership to the town of Oak Grove Volunteer Fire Department. All right, I need a, we got a motion. When it's done. Did we vote on We did, okay. Uh, get a motion to discuss. Uh, Thank you. So I'll move. Resolution to donate the vehicles. So moved. Second. All right. We have a uh, <laughs> a Dodge 2006 Dodge Durango, uh, and probably $500 is probably salvage value more than anything. It's so bad in condition that what uh, we'd like to do is to give it to the Northwest uh, Technical Institute over in Springdale, who does a lot of work on our cars um, and their labor is free when they do the work all we have to pay for is material only so we're giving them this car just for them to tear it apart and for the students to use to tear apart and fix up yes ma'am and there is no other use the city could put use this for example could the fire department use it in some emergency exercise burning it burning it or something but like then we got to dispose of it Okay. I'm just no. Okay. There isn't any use. This is okay. the best thing. It's just to give it to the school, and, uh, and they'll, those kids will go through and don't. They'll tear it apart and try to fix it back up, and, and uh, everything. Okay. So, Mr. McClellan, I'd like to sign this resolution, the number, and read it for Pat. Second. <coughs> Excuse me. Second. Okay. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yeah. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Six zero. The resolution number will be 734, a resolution to authorize the mayor to dispose of city-owned property without receiving monetary compensation. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed the Eureka Springs City Police Department has a 2006 Dodge Durango VIN number 1D4HB48NX6F1565651, valued at approximately $500, which is no longer needed for police operations. And whereas the city would like to dispose of this property by donating it to the Northwest Technical Institute, 709 South. Old Missouri Road, Springdale, Arkansas, 72764. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of Eureka Springs that the mayor is hereby authorized to assist the City Police Department in disposing of the 2006 Dodge Durango vehicle by transferring ownership to the Northwest Technical Institute. Okay. We'll get a motion to discuss the disposal of surplus city property so through an auction. Second. Okay. This is uh, something similar, except these vehicles do still run. They've just outlived their useful life. Uh, and so we just need to get rid of them and donate or auction them off. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we assign this resolution to the number and read it for passage. Second. Discussion? Okay. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yep. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. 6 0. The resolution number will be 735. A resolution authorizing the disposal of surplus city property through auction. 
Whereas the City Council recognizes the importance of accounting for capital items disposed of through means of auction and whereas adherences to the previously established fix as fixed asset policy disposal, disposal of assets which determine that city assets shall not be sold without competitive bidding if the amount exceeds $5,000. That is from ordinance number 1699A passed in 725-1995 will have been satisfied. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that Section 1, the City Council shall accept the monies realized through the auction of the following vehicles and equipment. Police Department 2010 Ford Crown Victoria VIN number 2FABP7BV1AX114541. Police Department 2005 Dodge Durango VIN number 1D4HB4 eight N four five F five nine four zero six eight. Fire Department nineteen ninety seven GMC Yukon VIN number one G K E K one three R seven V J seven four zero four two five. Fire Department two thousand three Ford Crown Victoria VIN number two F A FP seven one WX three X one seven three six O four and Fire Department nineteen ninety six Chevrolet Ambulance then number one G B J K three four F X T E two two zero six four four. Section two the above listed fixed assets shall be removed from the city departments fixed asset inventory lists once each sale is completed. All right. Bring us to our next item uh, of unfinished business uh, number one, ordinance number 2269, amending adoption of plans, third reading. I move that we uh, read ordinance number 2269, amending adoptions of plans on Third reading by title only. Second. Discussion. Yes, sir. I'd just last comments. I'd like to ask again the city attorney if he still feels that this is a legal change. I don't believe it's a significant change to the code, but it's legal to okay. do it. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Mr. McClellan? Uh, personally, it's not a significant enough change to even bother with it, in my opinion. And that's why I'll continue to vote no on it. Any further discussion? All right. All those in, whoops, we have a roll call vote. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. McClellan? No. Mr. Buford? Yes. Five, one. Get a motion to. Um, Un momento. Oops. Ordinance Sorry, number 2269, right. an ordinance amending Title 13 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding adoption of plans. All right. There's all in favor. And now we need a motion to approve the yeah, motion to reading. approve the reading for the third and final reading. Did she make a motion to suspend the rules and do it that way? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's she what did? the voice, the roll call vote was for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the third reading of ordinance number two two six nine, amending the adoption of plans. You have a second. Second. Discussion. Mr. McClung? Nope. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Buford? Yes. Five, one.
All right. Uh, next item of business will be the ordinance 2272, amending plan unit development for second reading. In a I motion to discuss. I make a motion to discuss ordinance number 2272, amending planning unit developing on its second reading by title only. Okay, get a second. Second. Discussion. All right. Like yes, ma'am. Ms. Snyder? I'm still having a major problem with all the money that someone has to put out. It is not just the fee of $100. Um, it's quite a few different things, advertising, which is not the least of. There's got to be something that can be done or approved, whatever, before all that money has to be spent, just to be told no. Ms. Green? Um, Mickey, on all, all our point of, point of order, Ms. Mayor, we're only voting now to suspend the rules and read it by title. Then we'll discuss. Yeah. There's not been a motion. Oh, I thought, thought to I suspend the rules. Motion was to discuss the ordinance. Yeah. Motion yeah. just to discuss. Yeah, we're just ahead. discussing. I think it, I thought it was a combination of discussing to suspend the rules. Or nope. We're just. Just no, nope. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Go ahead. Um, Mickey, on all of our applications, there is a fee, there is the sending out of letters, it, it, and I don't disagree that, because I've had to do it, it's, it's expensive and you can be turned down, but that's part of the revenue to the city, and someone that's doing a plan unit development is going to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, so this is almost nothing for them. It's just part of the process. Ms. Carter? That is so totally wrong how to look at it. I don't care if they've got a million dollars or ten dollars. The point is they're spending an awful lot of money and they can be just told flat out, no, we don't want you here, we don't like that idea, whatever. Why can't some of this stuff, some of these approvals be done before they have, maybe, you know, the hundred dollars is not the point. It's all that other stuff. Why are we not getting these things approved before they have to go and do all the advertising and stuff because like, like say building inspector isn't going to approve it you guys are, are planning isn't going to you know, whatever why can't some approvals be done before the expenditure of all that extra money Ms. Kendrick we are not a charitable organization we are here to make money on the efforts that the city puts forth we are here to make money to use for the benefit of our citizens. I don't think that we should be giving our services away. Mr. McClung? Yeah, it, it, it takes time and material to put all that together at City Hall to present it for the meeting and to have it all ready and all. So I, it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly a fair fee. And I might say too, compared to other cities, it's, it's very cheap. I imagine so. Uh, Ms. Green? We, we have, in, in cases like that, we have a very competent staff, Glenna Booth, our building inspector, works with these people really before they do the application. So that it's, it's really rare that an application doesn't go through, but if it, it doesn't, I agree with Mr. McClung and Ms. Kendrick. I would like to make one more clarification that it's very important that city employees do not suggest to anyone when they fill out an application that it's that it's they're going to get approval. Okay. Just, I'm just know. making that may, statement. May I, cl may I clarify? I don't. That? I'm, um, I'm just. Yeah, that's I'm all clear. I want to say. Okay. Right. Our, our staff and, and I've worked. You know, I was on planning at HDC for 15 years. Our staff has has never told somebody, oh, you'll, you, this is a breeze for you. What they're there for is the education on what they need to accomplish this. Uh, any further discussion? Can I get a motion to uh, suspend the rules and place Ordinance 2272 on a second reading by title only? So moved. If you'll see, that's why the notice at the top here, it's already been read for the third time. I got ready for second reading. Thank you. We're right over. Prior. Thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules 
and read ordinance number 2272 amending plan unit development on its second reading. By title second. only. By title only. <laughs> second. All right, discussion. Right. Hearing none, the vote will be by roll call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Buford? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Hesitantly, yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Six, zero. Okay. Ordinance number 2272 as amended 72318 and ordinance amending Title 14 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding planned unit development. Get a motion to approve uh, ordinance 22 as amended. So Se moved. Second. Okay. Can we roll call? Please. Okay, all those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, so moved. I voted aye. All right, that brings us up to uh, item number three, unfinished business on the update on the auditorium remodel. If I can get a motion to discuss. Motion so moved. Second. Uh, we ran into some issues, <laughs> which is, you know, you never know what you're going to find on old buildings. Uh, and I'm not sure if I talked to the council the last time. We... Um, we discovered underneath the, the uh, wood floor we had a concrete slab. I think the council was aware of that. We cut the concrete slab. We found we had five inches of concrete. Then we had number four rebar, 12 inches on center, right underneath the concrete slab. And then we had about two inches of airspace, and then, or three inches, and then we had dirt. Uh, I went down with the structural engineer. And we didn't know how far the dirt went uh, because we really, I was amazed that we even had dirt. I, I mean, I, had, I was amazed at the concrete slab and I was amazed at the dirt being right underneath the slab. There's nothing supporting the slab. It's, it's there, I've never seen anything like it in all my experience with, uh, with historic preservations. And we took a round bar and we hammered down into the soil and we went down about two feet. But then when we got pulled the bar out and we took this, the 15 pound sledgehammer that we were using, we bounced it on the rebar and reinforcing, if y'all know what reinforcing is, when I'm saying number five, that's five eight inch thick, every 12 inches, there was a spring to the rebar. So we dropped the hammer, the hammer, the, the re reinforcing, Basically, what we have is the reinforcing is supporting the concrete, and it's acting like a post-tension slab. Post-tension slabs in modern times is when they have reinforcing inside the concrete, and they actually have a, um, a pulley, and they stretch the concrete, the rebar out, and puts it under stress. And so it's like a rubber band, and that gives it more strength. When they let it, when the concrete hardens and they let the concrete, I mean, let the rebar go, that pulls the concrete in. It's a modern technique uh, for doing a lot of uh, shopping center slabs, apartment slabs. I don't know how this one worked, uh, but what we do know is that we can't cut. We're afraid, I'll put it this way, the structural engineer and I am too, we're afraid to cut that, con that re reinforcing, to c go down. And the reason we have to do that is for this elevator to work, we have to have a, a what they call a pit, 16 inch deep. And so we'd have to cut the reinforcing to dig the pit. If we cut the reinforcing, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, 
and we don't want to take that chance. I don't want to take that chance. The structural engineer doesn't want to take that chance. So now we're back to uh, scheme three <laughs> uh, of looking at another system of an uh, elevator system that is uh, a little bit more than a lift but it's not a full 1,500 pound to 2,000 pound elevator. But it won't require uh, a, a pit. It's going to just be a screw jack like a hydraulic on four, four corners and literally would, would screw up the elevator and screw it down by motor, by an electric motor, but it's, it's a screw deal. Um, that way we don't have to cut the rebar, we don't have to dig a pit, uh, and we don't have to worry about collapsing it. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? I, I mean, the structural engineer, he's got probably about, he's got 60 years of experience and he's never seen anything like this. Uh, and I've got 45 years of experience and I've never seen anything like this. Uh, the drawings, the original drawings on the auditorium show that there's a valley underneath the, the slab and two big beams going across. That's not the way they built it. <laughs> Obviously in 1928 they decided, kind of like what they do today, to ignore the architect's drawings and to do it however they want. Uh, <laughs> so you read that. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, it, it's a heck of a thing. Uh, you guys can are more than welcome at any time to go down and look at the pit. We've got a, a hole drilled probably about a... 18 inches by two feet down there, and you can see the rebar. Uh, but it, it's literally, you could drop that sledgehammer and it would just bounce back. Uh, now, not all the reinforcements, there's something, one of them was a little bit, had a little bit more, less tension to it. <laughs> but it's not enough that we're willing to, to do it. So, what we're hoping is by the next meeting, uh, we're going to have you some new, have a preliminary plans and uh, cost. Uh, on this new system. The good news is it's going to be a less expensive elevator. Oh, cool. Um, and probably less expensive cost. Uh, it's just not going to be uh, what we are wanting for the full uh, 2,500 pound elevator system. But it is what it is. I mean, ultimately what we were trying to do was for ADA and, mm -hmm. and uh, right. accessibility anyway. What weight will it handle? Well, we're still dealing with the, uh, we've got two elevator c companies that we're using uh, that we're talking to right now. Uh, one of them, and y'all are probably familiar with, there's two, they've already done two elevators in town. Uh, one is right behind the uh, Baptist Church, uh, and another one is on Howe Street. As you go up Howe Street, you can see it. That's one company. And then we're looking with this other company to, to see see if they've got anything to do. But we're looking at, hopefully what we're looking at is around 1,200 pound system. So we can still carry some freight, uh, but we'll also have big enough room for the uh, wheelchair. I mean, ultimately that's what we want, but we also, hopefully we can carry some freight, or equipment, I shouldn't say freight, but equipment up and down. So anyway, that kind of gives y'all, you got any other questions? So we'll, Thank you. I'm hoping by the next meeting uh, we'll have some more. We'll actually have something that y'all can look at, some visual. Mr. McClellan? Uh, yeah. It's oh, related, yes. but they're not yeah. really related. Any news on the appraisal for the... No, I haven't. I hadn't heard. I went ahead and told them to go ahead and do that. Uh, I got a call from the uh, commercial guy, and we're playing phone tag. On that. So it hadn't been ordered yet. Head. Are you talking about on, on 24 the, North? The, the, the North building Street. on North Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, getting an approach on that. Okay. Thank right. you, Butch. Any, okay. Is there nothing else? Apparently this is working fine for the auditorium, keeping it in balance. It's <laughs> working. It's been working for, you <laughs> know, know, almost 100 years. Not quite 100 years. But, <laughs> and I don't want to screw it up. That's right. <laughs> <don't>, you know. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, agenda setting. Yes, ma'am. I would like to put a discussion of panhandling downtown. I'll second for discussion. I'll second. 
Okay. Okay, and I'd like to also, this was a failed ordinance, and, and I know I've talked with you about it, Butch, it's on the doggy bags. It's on the, an ordinance regarding disposal of animal feces. I'd like to discuss it, it failed back when Dana was mayor but you know something for that was the park one yeah that we can put up some dispensers uh, around town downtown oh around town <laughs> uh, okay right. anybody else Mr. Thomas yes I have two um, I'd like to update Council on the <coughs> Roberts Rules of Order workshop that we voted to hold after the election. I'll second that. And also, I think we need to discuss uh, allocation of tax money to parks for the fourth quarter of, of 2018. I'll second that. I guess a little clarification. What do you what exactly do you mean on the allocation of parks money? Uh, appropriation. <coughs> appropriation. Appropriation. Uh, the city council. City doesn't. Are you talking about? Yeah. City council has to authorize the transfer of money to parks department. Okay. As per the municipal league attorney. There was a different. All right. We'll, we can discuss that. There's different opinions on that. But okay. And we had a second. Yep, second. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, comments? Mr. McClung? No, sir. Ms. Kendrick? No. Mr. Thomas? Uh, yes, I do. And I'd like to pass out a handout if I could. Be sure everybody gets one in the room. Uh, this is a. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The. Three Play Media posted this article on the internet. And Three Play Media creates closed captions and subtitles in many different formats and languages and provides services to more than 2,500 universities, companies, and government agencies, including Procter & Gamble, Time Warner Cable, MIT, the IRS, and Sesame Street. And this article was entitled, Five Municipalities Doing Captioning Right, which began with the sentence, we wanted to highlight some of the best captioning programs in local governments. Eureka Springs, with its captioned council meetings, was rated number three of the five behind Isla Morada, Florida, and Boston and ahead of Hawaii County, Hawaii, and Los Angeles, California. About Eureka Springs, Three Play Media noted that for a small town of around 2,000 people, Eureka Springs, Arkansas is still doing better than most municipal governments out there when it comes to captioning their videos. This achievement and this recommendation for our city and its captioning program results primarily from the efforts of three people, Kim Stryker, the administrative assistant, Don Matt, Channel 21 supervisor, and David Rush, the videographer and editor. These three people have worked with diligence and commitment to develop and tweak the city's captioning program, and I think they deserve our thanks. Absolutely, thank you. That's awesome. Anything else? Mr. Thomas? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Okay. Ms. Starter? Okay. This last weekend was our eighth annual Eurekan weekend. Um, as awesome as the numbers were last year, I'm really liking the ones from this year. 92% of all of the people who came this whole three day weekend to do these athletic endeavors 92 percent were not in our 72632 zip code we had 125 brand new participants our oldest was 74 years old our youngest was 10 years old it covered 16 states from the Washington on the west coast to Florida on the east coast and of course tons of states in between we had two foreign countries, Spain and Argentina, again, 
but we also had contestants from Hong Kong and Puerto Rico who are in Bentonville going to school and they put down Bentonville not realizing they should do their home country. So we actually had four foreign countries last year. We had five. Um, the biggest thing that is drawing them from all over the world is the physical challenge. And when you think about doing like a 100 mile bike ride in August out here, yes, it is drawing more and more, getting a lot more attention. Um, we had 61 people do the full Eureka, which is the, um, I'm going brain dead, <laughs> the triathlon on Friday, the 100 mile bike ride on Saturday, and the 10K run on Sunday. We had 61 people do it, and I believe 59 completed. We had a new one this year that's a half Eureka, so you do 50 miles instead of 100. We had 15 people do and complete that. We had 103 people do the triathlon, 226 people do the, the four different bike races, and 201 people doing the running. Um, I, this is the best part. I am so excited to be able to give the first place. First place over all of these competitors was a woman. She beat out like a hundred men. It was unbelievable. And she beat them out by half an hour. Mm -hmm. That was Jessica Myers took first place. The total three day time period was five hours and 58 minutes. Now where is she from? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That paperwork I do not have. But she did the 100 mile bike and that included that 15 minute pouring down rain in 4 hours and 56 minutes. Yeah, imagine that. Second place was Roger McMillan. He did his in 6 hours and 27 minutes. Third was Sean Morris in 6 hours and 28 minutes. They were 58 seconds apart. Fourth place, another woman. I couldn't believe it. Two out of the top four were female. Six hours and 51 minutes. You have no idea how exciting that is because I stand right there on the last half block watching these 100 miles come in and oh my God, it's unreal. So that's the numbers. Now, as usual, they spent a lot of time in town because they were coming in on Tuesday and Wednesday to race Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, if we could just move our school dates back to September, we could triple that number. <laughs> but that's our, and as you can see, I'm wearing my yellow Eureka. That's what our volunteers got to wear this year. Anybody who wants to help out, boy, just let me know. We can use as many as we can get. And the one comment that we got from almost every singer competitor out here, their number one thing was the unbelievability of the friendliness and helpfulness of our local volunteers in our community. That meant more to them than anything else. These people are pros. They race all over the country. We have the friendliest, best people, in their opinion, in the whole freaking country. Way to go, Eureka. How many volunteers did we have? I don't have that number either. I'll be, okay. We're doing our final wrap-up on Wednesday, and I can get that. Not as many as we needed. We do need a few more. Um, we've had a couple move away, and others have some medical problems. So we can always use them. I roped in Bob, and he roped in his son. <laughs> <laughs> and he did great and loved it. So, yeah, just keep coming, guys. That's it. All right. Ms. Green? I'd just like to welcome Tom. It would be an honor to serve with you. Thank you. I'm done. Mr. Buford. <laughs> well, I appreciate the vote and look forward to working with y'all the rest of the year. Thank you. Well, um, well, I want to thank you for coming up, stepping up, and putting your name in the hat and volunteering uh, to go ahead and fill out a term. Uh, you know, it's a uh, Part of uh, service work in Eureka Springs, and, and I know you've been involved, and I certainly appreciate you doing that. Um, as far as events going this uh, weekend, 
Uh, the 16th, we'll have uh, Poet Luck in the Park starting at 6 p.m. Uh, to 8.30. And then on this, this weekend, it's Bluegrass Weekend, which is one of my favorite weekends in town. Uh, the 17th, uh, we'll have Bluegrass in the Basin Park starting at 4 o'clock. We'll have The Crumbs with uh, 5.30, a boy named Banjo will be playing. And then on the 18th, Saturday, uh, The Crumbs will be back at 1 o'clock. And then one of my favorite groups, Lonesome Road, will be back. And they'll be playing at 2.30. Uh, Runaway Planet at 4 o'clock and Chatham County Line at 5.30. And then on the 19th, we'll have the uh, Enduro in-town uh, bike race from 7.30 in the morning to 9.15. That's going to be in-town, in and off uh, the streets and off course, off-road courses. Following weekend is going to be our traditional uh, Volkswagen show. The 24th through the 26th will be a combination of the traditional Volkswagen along with the uh, untraditional Foul Air Volkswagens. Um, the Foul Air, we, we've got to separate these two. <laughs> so the Foul Air will be up at the Pine Mountain Village and the traditional Volkswagens will be at Inner the Ozarks. But then the parade, which will be a combination of everybody, will be at 3 o'clock. Uh, on the 25th. First. I don't know. Probably the traditional because the foul air is pretty they're, they're different. <laughs> so anyway, get a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you all. What